Hello, and thank you for tuning in to this installment of the Town Administrator's Report. This installment will focus on the upcoming June Town Meeting scheduled for Monday evening, June 5th, 2017 at 7 o'clock p.m. at North Reading High School. With me today for the start of our show is Danielle McKnight, who is the Town Planner and Planning Administrator for the Community Planning Commission. Danielle, thank you for joining me. Uh, most residents uh, should have received in their mailbox a copy of the warrant, uh, which we have with us today. The beginning of the discussion for, this, the, for today's program will focus on two articles that relate to zoning and planning here in North Reading. The first article, Article 23, relates to funding a master plan update. And Danielle, I'd ask if you could just tell us a little bit about that article. Sure. Um, so a master plan is something the town um, should do about every 10 years. It's a way to get the community together to create a vision for how they foresee um, the town's future. We look at things like the built environment, um, how we're growing in terms of population, um, things like open space and recreation, um, cultural resources, um, transportation, housing. Um, there's a set list of topics that uh, go um, into every master plan. The last time North Reading did one was in 2004, so um, we're definitely due for an update. Mm -hmm. Town has changed a lot, and um, we are excited to be digging into a, an update in order to hear what, what people want to see in the future. Um, the article request is for um, part of the funds that it will actually take to get the master plan completed, but we've actually, in the last three years, uh, the CPC has actually invested quite a bit of time and resources into um, doing a lot of work that will be um, worked into the master plan. For example, an economic development study for Main Street. Um, we're currently working on an affordable housing plan, mm -hmm. and we're also working on um, a transportation study. So uh, those have been a combination of town money and um, some, some grants that we've received. Um, so we're looking forward to pulling all that together into a master plan update. That's excellent. So uh, the funding, the amount is $85,000. Uh, is being right. requested at town meeting. Um, and, and what will that funding go towards? Will we be paying staff, paying a consultant? A consultant um, would be hired. I would be working very closely with the consultant along with the CPC members, um, and we would be looking um, for volunteers to um, participate in um, giving feedback and participating in, in community forums as we work through this. But um, yeah, the actual funds would be going to pay a consultant. And, and how long an effort do you foresee that the uh, master plan um, from from now until the conclusion would run, uh, is it a matter of months, years? Um, probably about eighteen months. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, thank you for that description. Um, there's also one other article that's on the warrant for the town meeting, and it relates to a zoning bylaw amendment in the uh, Main Street area. It's Article 27, and I'd ask if you could tell us a little bit about about that article. Sure. So um, this article came out of. Um, a couple of things. One, uh, the CPC has been thinking for, for many years about how to improve um, the, uh, the vitality and the business climate on Main Street and how to make it um, a, a better place for, you know, for, for shopping and for, and for um, you know, just for residents to, to, to bring more amenities um, and to make it more of a, um, a little bit more of a downtown feel than it currently is. And um, part of that was uh, the economic development study that we did a couple years ago that I mentioned earlier um, had a number of recommendations related to how we could um, incentivize some, you know, additional development along Main Street. Um, and one of one of the things that was pointed out was that we would be able to attract um, a bit more retail um, on some properties that currently don't have um, much uh, going on right now in order to, um, you know, just to increase the offerings um, and increase what property owners could do with their property um, if we were to um, bring a little bit of uh, residential development into that area in order to, to support that. So this is um, an overlay. It doesn't change anything about the, the underlying zoning. Um, all the uses that were previously allowed will still be allowed on this um, handful of parcels that are proposed for, re um, for um, rezoning. Um, but in addition to that, uh, multifamily housing development would be available as, an, as another use. But only in conjunction with a mixed-use development. So, for example, um, if a property owner wanted to, um, uh, you know, redevelop a site in such a way that they could put, um, you know, 80% of the building area could be devoted to residential, multifamily residential development, but mm -hmm. the remaining 20% would need to be some kind of commercial use, restaurant, retail, um, something else that's allowed in highway business, either by right or by special permit, and. Um, 
that would be uh, for a, a, a somewhat of a small number of parcels along Main Street, kind of in the vicinity of Winter Street. Um, we started with that geographic area. We um, wanted to, to start small, not introduce too much change too quickly, um, but depending on how um, things go, possibly expand that area in the future. That's excellent. Thank you. And again, that's Article 27. Uh, it's been submitting by, submitted by the Planning Commission. And uh, has there been uh, any public input prior to this point in the process? Yes. Uh, the Community Planning Commission held their public hearing on this um, on May 16th. And at that hearing, voted to recommend the article at town meeting. Um, but prior to that, um, the CPC has had a number of, um, you know, meetings where this has just been discussed as part of their agenda, um, discussed publicly. Um, and then prior to that, we had the economic development study, which, um, you know, did have a, a more formal uh, community forum where we got a lot of input from residents um, on areas that, and, and the kinds of things they um, would would find acceptable as far as seeing um, new uses introduced to Main Street. Are there any development projects that are uh, in the works that uh, may benefit from this? Um, well, we do have a project that hasn't actually been submitted yet, but um, we have heard from a developer um, on Winter Street that um, is interested in potentially doing a first floor commercial and two um, floors of, of um, uh, residential above. Excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your being with us uh, for uh, this installment of the Town Administrator's Report. I uh, appreciate your time, and we'll see you at town meeting. Uh, stay tuned for part two, which will relate to the financial articles for town meeting. Hello and welcome back to part two of this edition of the Town Administrator's Report. This edition has been focusing on the upcoming June 5th, 2017 annual town meeting and some of the articles of interest that are on the warrant. With me now is Police Chief Michael Murphy. Chief, how are you? Good, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. No problem. So, Chief, the Chief's here to speak with us today a little bit about Article 25, which relates to the regulation of drones. And residents should have received a warrant the cover like this in the mail over the past few days. And I'll just read from the summary here that's in the description, which states that the article proposes to establish a bylaw to protect citizens from invasions of privacy, potential trespassers, and address safety issues presented by careless drone operations, which are not otherwise the subject of federal law. And we've worked with town council and the police department to craft this bylaw. Chief, could you tell us a little bit about what prompted um, your thoughts on this particular bylaw? Sure. Over the last couple of years, um, every once in a while, we'll get questions from residents, from business owners regarding drone use. Um, and essentially, the drone uh, regulations, uh, FAA regulates drone use, any unmanned aircraft or any aircraft, um, essentially. So we, as a uh, police department, had no enforcement power if there were to be an issue with a drone um, that um, may have risen to criminal activity if it were not um, a, a drone use. So um, it just prompted me to look into what we could do as a community to be proactive, to try to avoid any unnecessary um, situations where a drone would be u misused um, by somebody that had no regular uh, intent to, do, um, to use the drone in a proper way. Um, so you know, we ended up discussing it with, with um, yourself and, and town council to see what could we possibly do um, to make sure that our citizens were protected. Sure, and it would seem to me that this is somewhat of a quality of life issue where you're trying to protect the privacy of our residents here in town, our businesses perhaps as well. Um, is this something that you've seen that there's other examples in other cities and towns at this point? There have been a few cases where um, you know, towns have, have developed a bylaw or something similar. Um, you know, and, and in no way are we trying to um, stop the use of drones. Drones is a, a, uh, the use of drones in, in commercial and residential, recreational. Um, you know, it's it's a booming industry. Um, so with that, we you know we're just concerned that there may be some misuse of the drones. So we're trying to just put a bylaw in place that would um, try to eliminate. Um, some of the, the areas that we seek some concerns with, and that's the reckless and careless operation of a drone. Um, you know, people possibly using the drone for, um, to essentially look into somebody's house or look into somebody's backyard, which without the drone they wouldn't be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, we're also using it to, um, you know, f for somebody that were to use a drone to violate a restraining order, something that none of us would ever think could be possible 
but with the technology that's out there, it, there's a very good possibility that that could happen. So mm -hmm. when we develop the, the bylaw, that's the focus of it. Um, the focus is clearly not to um, try to deter anybody from using it um, in any legitimate way. Mm -hmm. And I think what makes this an interesting topic is that the federal law seems to be, to be evolving as well. I mean, even from where it was two years ago, it seems that as the technology advances, so does the federal regulation. And uh, we're here in town trying to fill in the gaps to make sure we can address uh, issues of privacy. Yes. Um, so again, as you mentioned, this bylaw is drafted uh, in conjunction with my office, uh, with uh, yourself and your staff, as well as with town council to ensure uh, its legality. Uh, it's on the warrant to be considered as Article 25 uh, for uh, the June Town Meeting. Chief, I want to thank you for your work on this and thank you for being with us now. Uh, stay you. tuned for uh, Part 3 of our review with Finance Director Liz Rourke. Welcome back for Part 3 of this edition of the Town Administrator's Report. Uh, joining me now is Finance Director Liz Rourke. Liz, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Mike. Uh, for this portion, we thought we would go through all of the financial-related warrant articles for the upcoming town meeting, and we've selected a few that uh, we think uh, would generate a significant amount of interest, and I thought we might go through them in order. So, Liz, thanks for your time. Uh, starting with number two, article number two, the fiscal year 2017 snow and ice deficit, could you tell us a little bit about that article and, and how much would be appropriated? Sure. Um, article two is a routine article that we have typically um, at our annual June town meeting, um, and it is to take care of any excess snow and ice deficit that we may have. This year's shortfall uh, with our snow and ice budget, um, we need to appropriate $60,000 from free cash. And the town has an annual budget that it appropriates for it. Uh, how much is that for? The town's annual operating budget for snow and ice is $175,000. Excellent. Article 3, Appropriation into the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. Could you tell us a little bit about that article? The Debt Capital Stabilization Fund um, was established many years ago in order to purchase capital items as well as to offset the debt service budget for bonded capital items. So we plan to transfer in um, at June town meeting approximately $1.1 million um, and this would be used for future capital purchases as well as offsetting the debt service budget. And th that's followed by another stabilization uh, fund article relative to water. Could you tell us about that? Sure. The Water Infrastructure Stabilization Fund um, is established and has been used um, in the past to purchase small capital items for the water enterprise um, budget. Typically anything from 75000 to 25000 as it's not worth um, you know, borrowing for those long term. And I also understand with the MWRA coming online, we plan on um, using it to stabilize the water rates. That's correct, yes. Uh, there's a significant expense associated with the interconnection of the MWRA, and we're in the th now coming up to the third year of a multi-year strategy to generate retained earnings in the interest of stabilizing rates over the long term of the project. I'm going to skip ahead a few articles now to Article 15, which is the fiscal year 2018 operating budget, and I'd ask you to just tell us a little bit about that. The FY18 operating budget is comprised of the town's budget, the school department's budget, as well as um, annual fixed costs, which can be anything from general liability insurance to health insurance um, and uh, debt service. So it's comprised of three, three pieces as well as the enterprise funds which are at the end of the what we call the omnibus for article 15. The town's budget is uh, approximately 15 million. The school's budget is um, 29 million six and fixed costs are 20 million eight hundred. These are all approximate numbers. Um, and the enterprise funds which are made up of Parks and Rec Enterprise Hillview Enterprise and Water Enterprise total approximately six million. Thank you. And that article is followed by the fiscal year 2018 capital expenditure plan. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into that uh, by a lot of folks, including yourself. Could you tell us a little bit about that process and, and what that article represents? Yes. So Article 18 represents uh, cap FY18 capital expenses. We start in August of the year prior to the next fiscal year with the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and we go through a process of 
reviewing all of the capital requests from you know the water enterprise uh, fund parks and rec and all the town departments as well as school departments and uh, we make sure uh, their request is accurate and it fits what the needs are for the department whether it's a piece of equipment or it's a repair and then we see how it fits into our uh, debt budget whether we're going to fund it with free cash or raise and appropriate or bond it and so this year we are uh, proposing approximately 2.5 million dollars worth of capital items and some of those include items paid from the water infrastructure stabilization for um, the water department um, you know another one includes a fire truck so we have a whole slew of items um, for FY18 that were part of the FY18 capital plan and as well as approved by the Board of Selectmen. Well, thank you for that description and I want to thank the members of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee including yourself for their efforts over the past few months to vet all of the requests and to come up with a plan that fits within the town's available finances. The last article I wanted to ask you to speak to was Article 21 which relates to the uh, other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Um, also known as OPEB, Other Post-Employment Benefits, which if you aren't familiar with that, what that stands for is it is um, post-retirement, post-employment, which is your retirement benefits of health insurance and life insurance, and it's the town's portion to pay for retirees health insurance as well as life insurance. The $300,000 that we're proposing to transfer into the OPEB trust fund this year is enough funds to cover 100% of new hires benefits down the road. We have quite a high um, liability at this time. It's um, you know pushing 89 million, which is all um, health insurance costs you know accrued many many years out um, it's not one year's health insurance cost so we are doing what we can to um, reduce future liabilities that the town will incur well thank you and thank you for your efforts uh, along with our, uh, our auditor um, the, and the finance committee to come up with a plan for uh, for funding this uh, as we uh, grapple with what's a significant long-term expense mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for those descriptions. I have a couple of other articles that I'm going to review um, that uh, are on the warrant. Uh, first being Article 14, which relates to funding the construction associated with the MWRA interconnection. Uh, and there's a series of construction appropriations that relate to the project, uh, one of which is the construction of a pump station to be located over uh, on Mill Street at the, the Reading Town Line, as well as distribution system improvements in North Reading as, and work that needs to be conducted in the town of Reading to allow the water to pass through from the MWRA to the town of North Reading. The second article that I'll note is Article 17 which relates to funding for facilities at Arthur J. Kenny Field and this is a code compliance issue where the town's required to construct uh, public restrooms uh, in, for the associated use of the spectators on the field we currently have a uh, bid package that's been released and we're expecting proposals to come in um, a few days before the town meeting and we hope to make a recommendation to town meeting for funding that project. And the final article that I'll mention is Article 26 which makes some changes to the snow removal uh, bylaw as it relates to streets and sidewalks, specifically sidewalks. Uh, and what it would do is it would increase the fine structure to $300 which is the maximum allowed by state law and uh, eliminate the requirement for warning or for a first offense fine to be issued. The goal of trying to increase compliance with the bylaw by our business owners. So Liz, again, I want to say thank you for joining us today and for all of your efforts related to the town's budget. Uh, most people will see the town budget uh, on June 5th, uh, but uh, there, there's probably been nine months worth of work that's gone into it to that point. Uh, and I, again, I want to thank you and your staff um, as well as the financial planning team and the finance committee for their, uh, for their efforts. Thank you for tuning in. We hope to see you at the town meeting on Monday, June 5th at 7 o'clock p.m. at North Reading High School. Take care.